Hi, I'm Emily from Trident Fly Fishing. Today we're going to tie the woolly bugger. This is a very versatile fly and a must have in every fly fisherman's fly box. The woolly bugger can be tied in a variety of sizes and colors and can target species from trout, bass, pike, salmon, steelhead, shad, you name it. It's arguably one of the most popular searching flies of all time. Depending on the size of the fly and the colors you use and how you fish it, this fly could imitate a leech, a minnow, a crayfish, or any large nymph, such as a damselfly or dragonfly, or even a stonefly. It's hard to say exactly who invented the woolly bugger, but we know it has its origins in the old English pattern, the woolly worm, which is also a very effective pattern. The hook that we'll be using for the woolly bugger is a 4X long streamer hook. I'm going to be tying on a size six today, but really any streamer hook will do. This fly can be tied in a variety of different sizes. The wire here is a lead-free wire. It's a weight material. We'll be using that to add some extra weight to the, to the fly. The body material is a chenille. Um, color can vary widely. Today we're gonna tie a white fly. The tail is a white, in this case, marabou. I like to use marabou blood quills. We'll talk more about that later. And then a white saddle hackle. The hackle is a, a strung saddle hackle. We're using white today, but any variety of color will work. And there aren't too many flies that don't benefit from a dose of crystal flash, so we'll incorporate that as well. We'll start with the hook. It's a 4X long streamer hook. I'm going to be tying a conehead woolly bugger today. So whether you're using a cone or a bead, you put the, that item on first, the small end goes on the hook first, all the way up to the eye, then affix that hook into your vise, nice and secure. The first step is to build up a bit of a thread body on the fly. I'm laying a base. Woolly buggers really benefit from some added weight, so we're going to be putting some wire on the body of the fly. I'm using a lead-free wire. This is a .020, but you could use .025 depending on the size of your hook. There are different ways you can weight the fly. I like to weight it up pretty good, so I put a single, just make sure those wraps are nice and tight. Sometimes it gets away from you a little bit a single layer up to the cone, and you'll see what we're gonna do in a minute here. And then, this is my own addition, I tend to weight the head of the fly double. So I'm gonna double back with my lead wraps to about halfway down the body. This gives it a bit of a jig-like action in the water, which is really enticing to fish. I use a pair of pretty old scissors if I'm cutting a material like this. This lead-free wire is harder than the old lead wire. You used to be able to just pinch it off, but this stuff, you do need to cut it, and it'll dull your scissors considerably, so that's why I use a, an older pair. Next, I'm just going to cover up those lead wraps with my thread. I'm using a 210 denier. Um, it's a pretty heavy thread, but it lets me put good pressure on the on the thread and tie in these heavier materials. Also, it's it builds up the bulk in the body more quickly. I'm just trying to get a uniform shape on this body. Um, it's also the extra weight in the head and the building up of the thread helps keep that cone in place as well. We're almost ready for the next part. All right, my thread is back to the end of the wraps of weight where I'm gonna tie in my tail material. I like to use marabou blood quills for the tail on the woolly bugger. And you can use a single quill or with the bigger patterns, I actually will, will use a pair. But with this, this is a size eight, so we're just gonna stick with one single quill. I'm gonna start by stripping off some of this fluff at the end to expose the quill itself. And then another, something that I learned a long time ago was you really, you can tie the fly like this, but I think it gives it a nicer action in the water if you get rid of these really wispy ends of that feather so that it just leaves the fluff. Now you can cut it, but cutting it, it 
doesn't give it a very natural look. So I'll actually kind of rip those ends off by taking the flat edge of my scissors and just coming in there and taking off that, those really wispy fibers leaving just the fluff of the marabou. There we go. Now to tame the marabou, I'm gonna just wet it a bit so that I can measure it. You want it to be about the li little bit longer than the total length of your hook. The tie-in point is directly behind your last wrap of lead. That prevents you from having a bump in the material. When you tie and cut, I'll be able to make a nice smooth transition from the tie-in point to the body. Now there aren't too many flies that don't benefit from a little bit of crystal flash, so you don't need to overdo it, but take a few strands and I'm gonna just tie them into the tail. Distribute them evenly on either side. We can trim them up at the end so that they're the right length with the rest of the tail. Advance your thread to the head of the fly. We're gonna tie in our body material, which is a chenille. We're tying an all white woolly bugger today, but the beauty of this fly is you can really mix things up and tie it in a whole rainbow of different colors. But today we're gonna use white. I cut a few inches of chenille and strip the fibers down at the tie-in point just to expose that thread core. I'm tying it in at the head and I'm gonna wrap back over the length of the body. This helps with a couple things. It adds a little more bulk to the body. It also ensures that by just tying in a little, one end and then wrapping, you're not pulling out, you're not risking pulling out that whole piece and losing it after you've wrapped it. So this is nice and secure. It's not going anywhere. Get back up to the head and nice even wraps, one right next to the other. Moving slowly to the front of the fly. You wanna keep even tension on the chenille and pass it from one hand, whoops, <laughs> not do that. Pass it from one hand to the next as you go over the hook shank. End up at the head and we're gonna tie off right behind that cone. And I'll give that a snip. Now we're ready for the hackle. Choose strung saddle hackle with nice long fibers, depending on the size of the fly. Um, this is, a, uh, these fibers are good for up to probably a size four woolly bugger. Um, we're gonna strip off this fluff and measure so that your the length of the collar, the first fibers, is about two times the width of the hook gap. You don't want it to be much more than about two and a half. Now, holding the feather with the shiny side up, that's the side that faces out from the bird, you're going to strip off just about a quarter inch more of fibers on that one side like that. And when we tie this in, you'll see how that's going to help orient the feather properly when we start to wrap it on the hook. Nice, good tension on that tie-in point. Give it one more. Now my thread needs to be at the back of the fly to tie this feather in once I've wrapped it. So I'm actually going to advance my thread to the back of the fly using open wraps. Hackle pliers, you can also wrap it by hand, but this makes things a bit easier. I'm gonna do a full wrap as the collar directly behind the, the cone head, and then spiraling back evenly spaced to the end of the fly. This is where those hackle pliers come in handy. If I was trying to hold that with my fingers, 
I would probably be in trouble right now. But, and then I'm going to move, advance my thread forward so that I end up at the head. Oops. Just a few turns. Give it a snip or a cut. I'm going to trim up my crystal flash at the tail of the fly so that it's even with my marabou fibers. Then we're going to take a drop of head cement and finish the fly. And that's a white conehead woolly bugger. All of these materials can be found at tridentflyfishing.com or by calling 888-413-5211. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.